Good morning. It's Wimala Bikuni, and I'm here with you today to meditate and talk a little bit. I uh, hope, you're, hope you're enjoying what I guess most of us think of as the beginning of summer, and I hope you're still being cautious and careful. Uh, I know there's a lot of fear right now, and I see it around me, and, and I feel parts of it as well. I'm certainly just like everybody else. And it's because there's so much confusion about what we're doing here, what others are doing, things we see on the news, other parts of the country. We're here in Illinois. We're, we're still under uh, mostly the stay at home. We're in the early stages of uh, getting out and about more. So we're all wearing masks, unless we go to Wisconsin to spend kind of a carefree escape week, weekend. But we're, there's a lot of confusion. We're seeing everything going on everywhere, everything different. I think most of us are not sure uh, what our next step is going to be. Or we may feel that there's gonna be pressure um, to hold back or to go forward sooner than we're ready. So, we are dealing with probably as difficult a time now as we have at any point during the pandemic. If you have loved ones who have recovered from the virus, I'm sure your major feeling is relief. But uh, I think for a lot of us who have made it through, we're now facing, well, what do we do when we get out? Are we just exposing ourselves? Or is everything fine? I, I had one thought about this weekend, it was Memorial Day, and I, I could see people being very attached just to the concept of, it's Memorial Day, we go to the beaches, this is what we've always done. And I realized that's one of those attachments that we cling to, and it can be just, we are so uh, eager to get out this is a chance. But for a lot of people, it's like, this is what we always do. Why aren't we doing it this year? So that can lead, that clinging, that attachment to that could be leading to some um, negative outcomes because we're not, under, we're not seeing that we can't hang on to things. Things are not going to be the way they always were. Uh, lots of things will be changing as we move back out into a new normal. So today I, had, I have something just beautiful that I want to read and then we'll build it into the meditation. And it's again from Thich Nhat Hanh's book, Fear, which you can see but uh, backwards on your screen. But it's a short word so I know you can all reverse it. Um, and this is in the chapter, Transforming Fear into Love. And I'm just going to skim the key points and lots of you, uh, are big fans of Thich Nhat Hanh and his, his, he's a wonderful Buddhist teacher and he's very poetic. So this is the chapter, Transfer, Transforming Fear into Love. And there, the first of it, I think is, I, I just got a chuckle out of it. I really like this. He's talking about the four mantras. And I love his definition of a mantra. He says, a mantra is a kind of magical formula that once uttered can entirely change a situation. But this magic formula must be spoken in concentration with body and mind focused as one. What you say in this state of being becomes a mantra. And he's sharing four. So he's, he's calling it, it's a magical formula. We put it into our mind and we quickly memorize it. It's always brief. We can say it at any time and it really makes our intention very clear. So it's, that's how we use it as a practice. We realize it's a psychological tool. We can call it magic, we can call it um, a heavy duty, profound spiritual teaching, but it's a psychological tool that can help us bring our intention to the forefront very quickly. So, but I want to read the funny part before I share the mantras. And I love this because of the importance of nature and because of the realization of how we are all organic ourselves, our body, 
this form that we live in that's not ourselves, but it's the body that we have on this earth. So I'm just reading a, like two, par two short paragraphs and then we'll get into the mantras. We have a great habitual fear inside ourselves. We're afraid of many things, of our own death, of losing our loved ones, of change, of being alone. The practice of mindfulness helps us to touch non-fear. It's only here and now that we can experience total relief, total happiness. So it's only here and now, it's only in the present moment that we can experience total relief, total happiness. Sorrow, fear, and depression, this is the funny part. Sorrow, fear, and depression are like a kind of garbage. But these bits of garbage are part of real life and we must look deeply into their nature. We should not, we can practice so as to turn these bits of garbage into flowers. We should not throw anything out. All we have to do is learn the art of composting, of transforming our garbage into flowers. In the practice of Buddhism, we see that all mental formations, and this includes compassion, love, fear, sorrow, and despair, are, are organic in nature. We don't need to be afraid of any of them because transformation is always possible. With just a smile and mindful breathing, we can start to transform them. When we feel fear or irritation or depression, we can recognize their presence and practice the mantras that he gives. So these are so these four very easy to, to remember and you can find them online if you look up, if you just Google. So the first one is the mantra for offering your presence. The most precious gift you give to the one you love is your true presence. So the first mantra is very simple. Dear one, I am here for you. When you love someone, the best thing you can offer that person is your presence. How can you love them if you are not there? Come back to yourself. Look into your loved one's eyes and say, Darling, you know something? I'm here for you. You are not preoccupied. You are offering your presence. You're not in the past or the future. You are right in the moment. Say this with your body and with your mind at the same time. And then you'll begin to see maybe immediately the transformation. So the first one, dear one, I am here for you. The mantra for recognizing your beloved is the second. Darling, I know you are there and I am so happy. To be there is the first step and recognizing the presence of the other person is the second step. Because you are fully there, you recognize that the presence of your beloved is something very precious. You embrace your beloved with mindfulness and he or she will bloom like a flower. You embrace your beloved with mindfulness and he or she will bloom like a flower. To be loved means first of all, to be recognized as existing. The first two mantras can bring happiness right away. What are they? Dear one, I am here for you. And dear one, I know you are there and I am so happy. They can bring happiness right away. Even if your loved one is not there in your physical presence, you can use a phone or an email to say, dear one, I know you are there and it makes me very happy. This is real meditation. In this particular meditation, there is love, compassion, joy, and freedom, the four elements of true love as described by the Buddha. So now here's three and four, the mantra for relieving suffering. The third mantra is what you practice when your beloved is suffering. Darling, I know you are suffering. That's why I am here for you. Even before you do anything to help, 
your wholehearted presence is already healing. Because when we suffer, we have great need for the presence of the person we love. If we are suffering and the person we love ignores us, we suffer more. So what you can do right away is to manifest your true presence to your beloved and say the mantra with all your mindfulness. Dear one, I know that you are suffering. That is why I am here for you. Your presence is a miracle. Your understanding of his or her pain is a miracle. And you are able to offer this aspect of your love immediately. Really try to be there for yourself, for life, for the people you love. Recognize the presence of those who live in the same place as you. We understand that, right, with our uh, stay at home. And try to be there when one of you is suffering because your presence is so precious for this person. So here's the next mantra is mantra for reaching out for help. This is very important. I want everybody to listen to this one very carefully. The mantra for reaching out to ask for help. The fourth mantra is a little bit more difficult. Dear one, I am suffering. Please help. This mantra is for when you are suffering and you believe that your loved one has caused you suffering. If someone else had done the same thing to you, <clears throat> you, would have, you would have suffered less. This is the person you love the most, so you suffer deeply. <clears throat> and the last thing you feel like doing is to ask that person for help. You prefer to go to your room, lock the door, and cry there all alone. So now it is your pride that is the obstacle to reconciliation and healing. According to the teaching of the Buddha, in true love there is no place for pride. When you're suffering like this, you must go to the person you love and ask for his or her help. This is true love. Do not let pride keep you apart. Practice for yourself first to bring about oneness of your body and mind before going to the other person to say the fourth mantra. Dear one, I am suffering. Please help. This is very simple but very hard to do. So, the last, the, well, just a final part, the four mantras work to remove fear, doubt, and isolation. They are not complicated or difficult to understand. You don't have to chant them in a foreign language. Uh, English is just fine. You should memorize these, and then you will, you'll have them with you all the time. As we meditate, I'm going to just repeat the mantras one at a time and just let it come into your mind. Caring for yourself, reestablishing peace for yourself is the basic condition for helping someone else. Okay? You can help another person stop bringing suffering on himself and others. Once you know how to diffuse the bomb in yourself, you will know how to help your friend diffuse the bomb in herself. To be able to help, we need to have at least a little calm, a little joy, a little compassion in us. We get these, we get these from practicing mindfulness in everyday life. Mindfulness isn't something we practice only in the meditation hall. We practice in the kitchen, in the garden, or when we're on the telephone, or on social media, driving the car, or washing the dishes. Being there with what is beautiful and healing inside of us and around us is something we should do every day. And it is possible to do this in all our daily activities. So now, these are timely, aren't they? So let's sit and just breathe and as we go along, I'll, I'll read just the mantra of the four mantras so you can, as you're breathing and your body is in the present moment and you're calming and it, letting your breathing calm your body, uh, 
I'll say the mantras. So close your eyes if that's comfortable for you. Be in that position that allows you to be awake and attentive. Feel your belly rising and falling. Just allow yourself to either focus your attention on your belly, where you can physically feel that breath very easily, or just around your nostrils, where it's a much more subtle sensation, but you definitely can practice there. Pick one or the other and just be with your breath. First mantra is for offering your presence. Dear one, I am here for you. Dear one, I am here for you. The second mantra is for recognizing the other, your beloved. Darling, I know you are there and I am so happy. Darling, I know you were there, and I am so happy. You can even let your breath help you on the in-breath. Darling, I know you are there on the out-breath, and I am so happy. In-breath, darling, I know you are there. Out-breath, and I am so happy. The third one is the mantra for relieving suffering. Darling, I know you're suffering. That's why I am here for you. Darling, I know you're suffering. That's why I am here for you. So on the in-breath, darling, I know you're suffering. Out breath, that's why I'm here for you. Darling, I know you are suffering. That's why I'm here for you.
in the fourth mantra. This may be the hardest one, so stick with it. Dear one, this is the mantra for reaching out to ask for help. Okay, so stay with it. Dear one, I am suffering. Please help. In breath, dear one, I am suffering. Out breath, please help. I am suffering. Please help. Dear one, I am suffering on the in-breath. Please help on the out-breath. And those are the four mantras. Now, I will write them in a, uh, an added uh, post, but probably practicing this way, we've all got it, right? I'm gonna do a quick review. Okay. First, remember we're composting our garbage, okay? We're recycling. We're turning, we're turning these things that are our fear we're turning them into flowers. I love that. Um, so first we offer our presence. Dear one, I am here for you. Second, we're, we're recognizing our beloved and our beloved is anyone. Remember when we practice loving kindness, our beloved becomes, we radiate out and out and out. Our dear ones become everyone, but this is easier. We have to work with the model that we, that's closest to us, I think, to begin. The second is, darling, I know you are there, and I am so happy. So we recognize the other giving us their presence. The third mantra is to help in relieving suffering. Darling, I know you're suffering. That's why I'm here for you. And the fourth one is asking for that help. Dear one, I am suffering. Please help. So remember, we always begin with ourselves when we know, and we can practice. Practice with your dog, practice with you know, something, someone easy. So the first person you wanna practice these with is with yourself. Because ultimately, we, we are the ones who dissolve our own suffering. We are the ones who transform. So we can practice with ourselves and then we can go out offering this. And I think it's, it's beautiful. I need, think we need t-shirts, right? We can make our own t-shirts. So put it on a small or make a little, uh, make something you can put up in front of you every day, somewhere where you're going to be reminded of it. And begin, when you become more and more comfortable with it, you can begin 
when you see someone, you can think these four mantras just from a distance, just as a part of your practice. This is mindfulness in the real world. So, and most, a lot of you I know have families you're living with, so you have everyone in that family you can practice with. So, um, all we can do is help other people to begin freeing themselves from their suffering, and this is a way to do it because here, once you know how to diffuse the bomb in yourself, we, you will know how to help your friend diffuse the bomb in herself. Okay, we're we're not we're not trying to lord it over someone, and these four mantras make that very clear. Okay, I hope you have a beautiful day, and I hope we all can find some beauty and joy and peace. In this in this world we live in and the people we live with so keep sitting if you have more time thanks so much thanks so much for being here for me